Hey, what's up? Here we are in Turin in this giant, yeah, giant building. Um, no turning back now. Here's the first rehearsal. Let's go. He's currently the UK's biggest music act on TikTok. Please welcome Sam Ryder. Sam Ryder. This year's UK Eurovision entry 2022. So I love your new role as the head of marketing. Yes, well I've appointed myself head of marketing this year for the Eurovision Song Contest. But I want you to sell this to me and I want you to sell it to everyone. Let's spread some positive vibes. I'm up for it. This year's UK Eurovision entry 2022 is Spaceman by Sam Ryder. It's pretty easy to keep the secret actually because I always tell myself if an opportunity comes along, I never believe that it's actually happened until that moment has happened and it's done and you've walked off stage and you're like, that actually happened. Today's the big day. We're heading to Maida Vale to be on Ken Bruce's show. Ken Bruce is an absolute legend. I remember listening to him when I was working in my dad's carpentry unit and uh, yeah, getting all the questions of Popmaster wrong. I'm so stoked to, uh, to meet him and um, talk to him about Spaceman being the Eurovision song for 2022. We called all of our closest friends and family the day before it was due to go, like, public. <laughs> Something. I'm delighted to welcome to our studio Sam Ryder, who is this year's UK Eurovision entry. Sam, good morning. Morning, Ken. I just want to say absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, you look happy, you look <laughs> ready and eager to get on with the job in hand. Now, let's uh, just, for those who are new to your music, uh, you've been massive on TikTok and other social media, um, particularly in lockdown, when you did the covers of uh, mm -hmm. other people's songs. Uh, and the great thing about that is that the, the people whose songs you covered were united in their praise of how you did them. So that must have been a wonderful feeling for you. Honestly, it was so encouraging. Um, it really lights a fire inside of you. And I think as an artist starting out, those little fires really, um, you know, they, they take you yeah. very far. It's a great thing to have, mm -hmm. some support like that. Yeah. So, Sam, it's, it's fantastic to see you, and I really hope it goes brilliantly for you. We'll be there supporting you when we get to Turin. Bless you. In two months' time. And I know you're going to be, doing, you're going to be busy over those two months doing a yes, lot of promotion. Yes, but I hope to see you, Jen. Well, we'll be <laughs> Jen, there. Jen, Jen, sorry, Jen, I'm getting sorry. nervous now. So, all right, I'll, I'll skip my um, pronouns to you. <laughs> Wait a minute, Before let. I go, yeah. I just want to say hi to my granddad. He's listening in the kitchen and Excellent. he's an absolute legend. Oh, what, what's your granddad's name? Pat. Pat, you there? <laughs> your, your boy's doing all right here. He'll be playing Popmaster later. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's, Sam's doing all right. He's doing a great job. Sam, and you will do a great job. I Bless know, you, Ken. Us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. Let's listen to the song once again. It's Spaceman, Sam Ryder. If I was an astronaut, I'd be floating in midair. I think that went well. That went well, right? I mean, I called, I called Ken Jetton. But apart from that, it was good. <laughs> All right, Grandad, you're right. <laughs> Did you hear it? <laughs> oh, thank you. So, what are you doing today? You want to be busy? Yeah, going to Radio 1 now, um, and then... Yeah, but don't worry, you have, don't have to turn Radio 2 off. You can... Li yeah, no, you stay on Radio 2, mate. <laughs> No. <laughs> I'll see you on Saturday and we'll watch a film and have some dinner. Thanks, Grandad, I love you. And I'm drifting in the dark. So now we are heading to Radio One and gonna go and chat to Scott Mills and Chris Stark. They've been supporting since day one actually, so I'm really excited for this. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> you love it? Oh, so mate, fun. you guys absolutely... Well, you smashed the announcement this morning, dude. Good, right? Yeah, How so good. good. Sam Ryder is here. Hello. Hello. How's it going? All good. Earlier announced as our UK entry for the Eurovision Song Contest this year. Did you hear my speech? I did. I was... I shed a tear, a single tear in the hotel room. It was amazing. You made such great points about just um, the need for positivity around the whole thing. I mean, it's, it's so crucial and um, yeah, hopefully we can do that this year. 
And now on Radio 1, Sam Ryder, UK Eurovision entry 2022, sings your online comments. What advice does he get punched in the nets to sing that high? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Callum. Thank you, uh, Callum. Callum. Does he get punched in the Fair nads question. to sing that high? Is a good question. <laughs> okay, next over to you, Polly, on Twitter. Thanks for your comment to Sam. Here he is singing it. I got so excited. I thought Sam Smith was doing your revision, but who the hell's this guy? <laughs> well, that was uh, Polly there with hers. I got so excited and thought Sam Smith was doing your revision. Who's this guy? Best of luck with everything, and thank, thank you, you so for joining much, us. You guys are the best. There <laughs> we go. Fantastic. So, last stop of the day, we are heading to the One Show to chat with Alex Jones, Ronan Keaton, and Ross Kemp, all legends. I'm well excited about this, actually. Uh, yeah, let's go. I was terrified before that first interview on the One Show. Now, earlier today, the singer representing the UK at this year's Eurovision Song Contest was announced, and we're very excited that he's joined us for his very first television interview and exclusive performance of his Eurovision song. Please welcome Sam Ryder. Hey, hey. Thank you so much. Thank welcome, so much. Sam. Incredible. Thank so you. how have you gone from making TikTok videos to representing your country? At <laughs> I have no idea. All I know is in January, I got a phone call from my record label saying, hey, can you meet us at this cafe at this time uh, and bring an open mind? <laughs> We're sitting in there and they sort of put Eurovision on the table. And I've been a Eurovision fan for, I mean, since I was a kid. But there's obviously a, a kind of a stigma attached in the UK to it. But it was really important for me to not let that fear of the stigma get in the way of just being a part of something that I love with all my heart, you know? And, um, yeah. yeah, what an honour. I'm, I'm so stoked. We'll be back tomorrow with Brian Adams, but now to play us out, it's Sam with the UK's Eurovision entry. Here he is, it's <laughs> Spaceman. If I was an astronaut, I'd be floating in midair And a broken heart would just belong to someone else down there I would be the center of my own so much love that. universe I'm, I'm only human, human. So and I'm a special <laughs> <laughs> Thank you man, thank you <laughs> oh, thank you. I really, really enjoyed it, it was good Oh, they're all so, so lovely Oh, I don't know why I'm <laughs> That was such a, a, just a lovely experience. Everyone, even like the crew and obviously like Ronan, Alex and Ross, just such lovely welcoming energy. Um, couldn't have asked for like a better group of people to do, like just to be with, with my first time on TV. So it's like, it's pretty nerve wracking. And um, yeah, they, they were just so amazing. It's just a lovely experience. As you're nervous, like to stop and tell yourself, this is something that's so, cool and you might like you might never get to experience again so enjoy it like just soak it up breathe it in and um yeah it ended up being such a lovely time I'm up in space There's nothing but space, man And I want to go home I've been playing and singing music for as long as I can remember. My first song that I remember actually listening to and singing along to was Freddie Mercury, Living On My Own. But yeah, I remember my mum said to me that the first time I ever sang was uh, Doo -doo -doo -doo, that bit in that Freddie Mercury track, yeah. The artist that I remember really kind of helping me find like my own voice and find how to get a little bit higher and learn technique was Steve Perry uh, from Journey, an amazing singer, like still one of my absolute favorites. I was touring and playing in bands a long time before I was singing at weddings. I should be crying, but I just can't let it show. I should be hoping my guns up here. 
but it really felt like my 10,000 hours came at weddings because you quickly learn you could sing your head off and you've got your eyes closed, you're in the zone, you're telling yourself, I'm nailing this, yeah, I'm getting this, I hit that note great, and then you finish the song and no one cares. Everyone's having the best time of their life and it wasn't because you like nailed Stevie Wonder, it was because they're, of course, at their wedding with their like, closest friends and family. So that in itself is amazing for a singer because you start learning to sing for yourself and then you really dig into your craft, your technique, and you're singing just for the love of singing. When we went into lockdown, um, all the weddings, obviously, stopped straight away. Tonight at 10, a sharp escalation in the response to coronavirus. And I wanted to keep on singing. I, I was having such a good relationship with music at that point and singing, so I didn't just want to completely stop, and I thought it was a good time to kind of dive in to my technique. So my friends kept telling me, like, get this app, TikTok, and start singing on there. And of course, I download the app, and there's just people dancing. And I'm like, <laughs> kind of like, OK, well, where do I fit in here? And all of a sudden, I found this really cool community of wicked singers. And it was so inspiring, because I thought, oh, these are my people. And you know, I'm inspired now to share songs that I love. And my first video was singing uh, <laughs> Britney Spears, Hit Me Baby One More Time as high as I could in my mum's kitchen. And it all, it all went from there. My loneliness is killing me and I... For years, my music sort of trajectory that I had in, envisioned in my head was like, I'm gonna do it the same way I made and did it. I'm gonna play my head off in pubs and clubs around the East End. And one day there'll be some label exec or manager sat at the bar and that's where you know, the door that I've been banging on will open. Of course, it didn't because I'm trying to live vicariously uh, through someone else's path. Um, and as soon as I kind of switched off that and just sang for the love of singing on an app in my mum's kitchen, singing Britney Spears, that's when that door kind of seemingly burst open. So come on, give me a I was singing Whitney Houston, um, I'm Every Woman. <laughs> Just even that sentence is wicked. Um, in the shed, it was probably the most like boiling hot day of the summer so far. So anyway, I'm having a hard time with the, uh, the Whitney slash Shaka Khan cover. And I, kinda, I need to take a break. I look at my phone and there's a basically a notification from Justin Bieber. And you immediately think like it's a fake account or something like that. And <laughs> I opened it up and Justin had messaged me saying, hey, I just texted your video to see her and she's just posted it. So I, I head over to that and um, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. Like, it was mad. Like in, in this break from singing Whitney Houston, I'm trying to make myself some pasta for lunch. I'm reading a DM from Justin Bieber and then Sia's just tagged me in this really gorgeous and kind and encouraging like post on her Instagram, like kind of just rooting for me and that meant the world, because she is probably one of my vocal heroes. She's amazing, not just at singing, but her energy as a person, as an amazing, like, force of a woman. To get that approval and just sort of nod, it feels like the universe is sort of putting a little breadcrumb on your path. Like, you're going the right way, just keep going. To anyone who's into anything, if someone, if one of your heroes gives you a, like, a bit of approval or encouragement like that, it means the world. It lights a fire in you that you can't, quite put into words, it's, it's amazing. That's just how I feel, hey. That's just how I feel. Oh, that's just how <laughs> There are people that love your music and they're waiting to hear it, but they just don't know it exists yet.
Spaceman was written about a year and a half ago. It was the first time that I'd met these two other writers that I was due to go into the studio and work with, Amy and Max, who have since become amazing friends and we're a bit of a, like a, a trio writing team actually um, now, which is wicked. <laughs> That's yeah, I was, uh, amazing. I know, isn't it insane? How I was just like, amazing. Space Man was never intended to be the Eurovision song. It was just a song that we happened to write that day. But it was such a special song even then because at that point I was sharing videos of covers online. And while that was doing so well, and I wouldn't be sitting here without it, it still wasn't enough to kind of move me to the next. If, if we say like your music career is a, a series of rooms, move me to the next room. But Spaceman was the song that got that job done. And I'm so grateful that day happened, changed my life and moved us to this next, to the next room. <laughs> if I was an astronaut, I'd be floating in midair. And a broken heart would just belong to someone else down there. Down to earth. Three, two, one, action. We're in Hungary, we're in Budapest. Um, it's the most beautiful day. We're filming the Spaceman video shoot. Um, blessed to be here, it's amazing. Keep like doing passes of the song in there, think, reminding myself how crazy it is that we're here with like a wicked crew when this thing started with just me in the corner of my room. Pretty amazing. Hey, Larry. Larry. Hey, Larry. Snogging now on the basketball court. Funny, I really feel like I know exactly how I want this scene to look, but I feel weird getting involved a bit too much. Because you don't want to tell people how to kiss. Yeah, just like. Because you've never done it. Have. <laughs> Tons of times. Thank you very much. That's a wrap for today on Sam. I'm not going to tell you anything, but I was stoked when I saw it. Let's see the thing. I kind of want to close my eyes until. Then we'll get to me. <laughs> Feels like Christmas when I got my N64. <laughs> Do I open my eyes now? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> that is sick. I think it's the biggest structure that Eurovision have ever had on a stage. And even saying that, I think I've said too much. I don't want to go on, but enjoy. <laughs> you guys have smashed it. So I've been a Eurovision fan since I was a kid. Uh, me and my family would watch it every year. And even now, me and my pals get together and have Eurovision parties. Uh, the most important year and the most kind of memorable year for me was 2006, when Lordi absolutely smashed it for Finland. Rock and roll angels, 
Seeing those guys in all their prosthetics, it was just amazing. And they were just enjoying every moment. Like they're in these probably like outfits that weigh a ton, prosthetics that cost a fortune. And he's got his little plastic Finland hat on top of it all, his battle axe and his bat wings. It was just, I mean, that is Eurovision completely in a nutshell to me. The level of songwriting, of performance, musicianship, it keeps elevating every year. And that's why I'm so excited for not just like the distant future of Eurovision, but its immediate future, especially in the UK, because I feel a shift in the attitude towards it. There's a, like a, a new younger audience getting involved through apps like TikTok. And I think it's gonna be incredible. I mean, it already is incredible, but just it's changing and it's gonna become absolutely unstoppable. And I really am looking forward to the moment it's starting to launch careers in the UK. And I wanna go. Love ya, peace, see you later. Thanks so much for coming, we gotta run. I said I was a Eurovision fan, right? And I, I am, but there are levels of fandom and you don't realize that until you start going out to the Eurovision pre party So it started in London and that was amazing. And you thought, I mean, this is incredible. That There's people waiting outside the hotel, not for any particular artist, but for this institution itself of Eurovision. They are Eurovision fans. I need to take my shoes off. Oh, oh no, damn. babe. Get in, shoes right. off. Oh, you came on like a little Damn. bear. And then you, you think it can't get any more, and then you go to Amsterdam and there's an, like an arena of 6,000 people just waving all manners of flags, supporting everyone equally. That's good. They're just fans of, of this thing, this bonkers, wild, bombastic, fascinating, expressive thing. And um, to be a part of it is, I'm, I'm just so grateful for it because it could easily have never have happened. And uh, I'd be all the worse off for not having this amazing experience in my life. shows we've ever done. Thank you so much. So cool. You are on fire, Sam. You are on fire, and I can, I can, I remember this feeling of being in in this this run, and you are here, and you are there, and you give an interview, and you're mm -hmm. so sharp, so quick, and I love it. Oh. You are on the right uh, track. I Bless mean, you. yeah. Thank you, and thanks so much for coming and visiting. I have no oh, idea. Like, I'm starstruck. <laughs> You know, oh, you guys very... made this happen, but I'm stoked. Thank you. When I touch you like this, and I hold you like that, it's so hard to believe, but it's all coming back to me now. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, ah. 
We're here uh, today at Dance Attic Studios. This is our final rehearsal before we head to Turin. I feel really excited, really stoked. It feels like we are like, tightening all the screws, getting the performance, like just getting, squeezing as much emotion and performance out of the song as possible, which is so important because you know, people are watching on TV, they're not in the crowd, they don't feel that energy, so it's important to try and convey as much of that feeling as possible. And we do that by singing our heads off. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. Um, I better get back. Love ya. That's a really good question. Difficult one as well. I, I wanna... I want to come home after May 14th and feel that I was on that stage singing with the same intention that I was singing with since I first fell in love with singing. And it was a way of expressing joy and finding happiness and it, it means everything to me, completely and utterly everything, singing and music. And I hope that Eurovision is an extension of that journey. I'm not looking for validation outside of that energy. And I'm excited for what the future holds. I'd want to keep singing my head off and see, see what next unexpected thing <laughs> comes around the corner. But thank you all so much for supporting. I wouldn't be here without you. And uh, I hope I do you proud. Peace. <laughs> Here's the first rehearsal. Let's go. Are we on yet? We're not, are we? Okay, in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I've searched around the universe, been down some black holes. There's nothing but space, man. Mm -hmm. And I wanna go home. Oh. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> 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 <laughs>